During Advent, we have been pausing a little bit during the reconciliation time to give you a bit of space just to hold in your minds and hearts um, events, issues, people that you feel you need to uh, ponder from a reconciliation perspective. Sometimes we call this prayer the prayer of confession. So if we move on to the next slide, today I've put up uh, two statements that come from the prodigal son story because I think they encourage us in terms of reconciliation. The first one comes from the prodigal, the young boy who left home and kind of basically took his father's money and went off. However, things didn't go so well for him, so he's thinking about coming back, and he says to himself, I'm going to say this to my dad when I go home. Father, I've sinned against heaven, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your child. Treat me like one of your hired hands. But as we read through the story, you'll know that the dad eventually says to him, Bring out the best robe and put a ring on his finger, for this son of mine was dead and is now alive. And so in the few moments that I would like to offer to you, you might resonate with the first statement, things that you wish you could let go of, or perhaps you might resonate with the second statement and allow yourself simply to be loved by the Holy One. Let us spend a few moments in silence. the stumbles we have made and the grace to begin again. We thank you, God. Amen. I'd invite you to share in a few moments of prayer with me this morning. Let us pray. Creator of life, mysterious God, close as our beating heart. We give you thanks this day for simple things, for a cup of good coffee shared with a friend, for getting closer to the end of our Christmas list, for the anticipation we have of the week to come, for knowing that there will be two glorious weeks of school holiday, for a moment to breathe in the midst of the busyness, for this place of music silence and inspiration. We bring our prayers too. When we stop long enough to watch the news, we know there is so much to pray about, O oh God. We know of people the world over who are uncertain about the peace in their lives, who wonder what they might eat this day, who find themselves out of their own country and in some foreign tent. We pray for them. We feel kind of helpless to meet their need, but we hold them in our hearts and we pray that you, the spirit of love, might be at work on their behalf. And we think closer to home 
of people we know recovering in hospital or anticipating the end of their days. We think of those who are in care in nursing facilities or in custody in prisons. And we pray that in each of those places your love might be made known as well. And finally, we return to our own lives. We think of the things that we ponder before we sleep, the worries that we have. Some of us have greater worries about relationships or finances or what to do with life. Some of us have lesser worries. But we pray that we might feel your spirit at work in us as well, and that you might reach out to us through the hands of co-workers and friends and family to bring us a sense of peace and comfort. Please combine with so many other prayers this day, and we're reminded of the prayer that Jesus taught and we say it together. Our Mother and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.